Hey everybody, welcome back to Mongrel's Garage and today, well, we're looking at the old drive shaft because we recently LS swapped our 67 Prigian and we put a 5.3 liter in it with 4L60 which is a bit of a difference in length from the original 283 and the two-speed power glide. We're going to talk about how to do this. There's a couple ways to do it. One might be a little more correct than the other, but we'll show, talk about both ways and we'll do it one of the ways. And we'll talk about some of the things you might encounter when you're looking at these. Now, I'd like to apologize for not having much content out lately because, well, my main computer has died on me. And it's got all my videos on it and that I have not yet edited. So this, it's something that was gonna get done anyways, but it's not really timeline sensitive. So we're gonna get into this and hopefully I'll get the computer back up and running and get the other videos out soon. You could try to play, but you're never gonna be now when it comes to drive shafts and changing the length you basically have three options that i am aware of the first option is to go find another vehicle that has a similar drive shaft length no ending. No ending. now the second thing that you can do and probably the best option is to have one made specifically for your application by a professional shop for an overhaul. that's going to give you your best results the third option is to modify it yourself it, ah, that's not going well <laughs> sorry and we're going to cover that in this video and a couple of other tips for finding the correct length doing one of the two options now all these options require you being able to measure the drive shaft and that's typically done from the center of the, each yoke so center here to center here which on this particular drive shaft we're looking at about 44 and a half inches that's how most of the drive shaft measurements are done and that's important we'll get into that in a little bit more detail later and there's two ways of going about doing that and we're going to talk about both ways why you might use one way versus the other all right let's get into this so the first step in this process is determining what our drive shaft length should be how are we going to do that well we're going to measure it yeah just needed a good old tape measure that'll get you in the ballpark close enough but there's some important things to remember you can't just jack the car up and run the tape measure to any old place and figure out where you're going to be first of all the suspension has to be loaded it has to be sitting in the ride position now there's a couple ways you can do this uh, if you can get under the vehicle like if it's a truck then you should be able to slide under there suspension loaded no problem take your measurement if it's something like this car you might be able to get under it but it's unlikely so what do you do well the best option is to use a four post lift move something because that is the way to keep your suspension loaded get under there nicely and measure and we'll show you that right now as you can see our car is sitting on its wheel it's got all the weight there same on the front it's nice and level this is the ideal position to have this in when we're measuring the drive shaft length and the best thing to do if you have it you can get a spare yoke slide it in all the way and then pull it back out about three quarters of an inch and then you're looking at the center of this cap here and you measure from that. So it can be about three quarters to an inch, somewhere in that area that you come back to here. And then on here, you're gonna measure back, if you have a flat face like this, you take this cap retainer off, you're gonna have a flat face here. It's not quite in the center of the cap, but it's very darn close. So you can just measure back to the flat of that cap for an easy, if you wanna be precise, you can measure to the center of the cap. And that'll give get us in a very good ballpark of where we should be for a dry shaft length. And like I said, it's capped, center cap to center cap is our overall length of the dry shaft. We're not including the yoke or anything like that on there. So let me measure up this one, see what we got. So we are looking at about 41 inches for this dry shaft on this Trans Am. Now this is a LS1 with a six speed transmission in it. So, 
that it'll be a little bit different for the automatic probably, but this particular car is 41 inch drive shaft. Now, I know what you're saying, mongrels, I ain't got me no four post lift. Well, neither do we for this car. So we're gonna do this the other way. We're gonna jack it up on the suspension on the rear diff and keep that loaded and then crawl underneath and measure that length out. Okay, there you can see we've got our drive shaft shoved in there and pulled it back out at about an inch, which is where it used to ride in the old transmission. We got our, our suspension jacked up. And now we're gonna measure the length. Remember, it's the center cap of the yoke right there. Back to the flat on the differential pinion. Let's have a look at our current situation. Well, you can see we're quite long. And we got an additional problem, which I'll talk about later. So that's why we need to modify our drive shaft. But let me get that measurement and we'll see what we have. Okay, so center of the cap to the flat of the yoke here, we're looking at about 59 and a quarter. Let's remember that. Okay, there's our starting measurement right here. There's our finishing measurement that we want. So you can see we're out by about two and three quarters of an inch. Uh, we got our drive shaft level fairly straight and one thing I did notice that there's it might have a little bow to it already because there's uh, the gap at this end's a little higher but you can't really rely upon that because it could be just something on the cap end here or something that's kicking this level up a little bit but anyways here's the problem we're going to run into on this type of drive shaft as opposed to that type of drive shaft this area next down if we were to take two and three quarters of an inch off well we don't have it we get into that neck down area so this is where i was talking about two different ways to modify a drive shaft and the best way if you're going to do it is to cut this weld right here on the back side cut that off get this out short take out what you need pound it back on line it all back up and we'll talk about a couple other things that you need to make sure of if you're going to do this yourself this is a balancing weight by the way so balancing is one of the other things and the other thing is alignment trueness roundness whatever you want to call it you know and then the most critical thing which we're checking right now with this level is that it's in phase what does that mean it means that this cap is perfectly level flat parallel to that cap they're on the same plane. If they're a few degrees out, you're gonna have it out of phase. Then you end up with weird vibrations or harmonics and stuff like that. So that's kind of the really critical part, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Right now we're trying to cut it. So this really li limits my options as to how I can shorten this. And unfortunately that means I have to cut the tube, I mean me to the tube, cut my section out and then weld it back up. It's not the preferred method, but it'll work. Like I said, one of the very important things is to keep our phasing. And to that end, we've got the straight edge on here. We're gonna mark this drive shaft. Now, I could just leave that mark, but I think I'm gonna run one all the way. There we go, clearly marked. And we're gonna cut out in this area in here. We're gonna figure out that next. And like I said, we need to take two and three quarters out, pick a point to measure from. Right there. As the old adage goes, the old rule, measure twice, cut once, right? Yeah, two and three quarters. Okay, next part, we're gonna take a piece of card stock or some construction paper, something like that, that's fairly stiff that has a straight edge. We're gonna wrap it around, put a piece of tape on it, and that way we can mark the shaft. All right, we're gonna get ourselves a piece of tape ready. Go here. Take our paper. We want to make sure that the edges aren't skewed like that. We want them perfectly lined up, just like that. Fairly tight. Okay, we're good on both ends. Nice and squared up. We're just going to draw our line all the way around so we get a nice guide for cutting. 
I'm gonna move it, do the same thing to here. This is one of the reasons we use the paper. So we can slide this paper around. Then I'm gonna take my cutoff wheel and we're gonna do scoring marks. And then we're gonna slowly cut this. So we get a nice, even, straight cut. But there we go, there's the section we're cutting out right there. metal here. Okay, you can see the other thing we've done is we've put a nice bevel on this so that the weld can penetrate deep in there. Put a pretty good angle on it. We want to get that weld as deep as we can in there. Do the other side, then we'll join these back up. Okay, what we did is we just took a wood clamp actually and squeezed it to make sure that it stays flush. We're going to turn it 90 degrees and do it again. See, I've got my ground as close as I can to the weld. So I just use these clamps, ground cable. Don't want it out on the edge because that has the potential of arcing through the bearings and the U-joints, so this is what we've done. We've got our drive shaft shortened. We got a couple tacks in it. Did that off camera because it's just easier. I need all hands and attention. But let's check our phasing right now. Line our lineup. I can tell right now but this shaft is bowed this way. You should better start making like one hell of a mechanic. Because we can see the line is straight along here, but then it gets farther away from the level. We've got our ends lined up, and this is one of the reasons I put this line on here is it gets us in the ballpark really quick. So we're gonna have to move the drive shaft center that way. That's why there's only a couple tacks in here right now. We can try to move it over, get it straightened back up. Okay, now you can see our line is perfect along the edge here both sides. So we're in a good place to start tacking this now. All right, you can see our line is perfectly straight now, all the way. And we've got approximately the same gap under the level, all the way. So, we're going to tack this up really good at this point, go fit it to the car. Well, you can see Dad's back there tunneling up the drive shaft. And up here, we're at exactly three quarters of an inch, which is plenty of travel for a drive shaft. That's great, bud. All right, so drive shaft's in. All the way back, bolted her up, looks good. You heard Logan earlier, the front is really good. Three quarters of an inch, that's plenty. Now, here you're gonna say, but mongrels, that's never gonna hold. That's way too weak. You can fly apart, fly apart then. And you're right, it won't, because we got one more step left to do. What we need to do is we need to check the drive shaft and run out now. So put a dial indicator on it and we'll put it on the drive shaft. We're gonna put a neutral and we're gonna turn the drive shaft, see how much run out we have, and we're gonna tap it with the hammer and we're gonna get it narrowed down so the, oh, anything under 10 thousandths of an inch run out, it, it will be fine. So that's why I haven't fully welded this up yet. I know it's really close, but we don't know if it's close enough. Got our dial indicator set up. We're gonna get our assistant to turn the tire. We're gonna see how much that needle moves. You're gonna have to turn it a lot. Okay, we got quite a bit of run out as you can see. We're gonna play with this a little bit, find out our where our deviation is, and then uh, knock it back into range. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. Hopefully it'll work. These old brakes kind of drag a bit. There we go. Now if I could do that consistently without putting weight on and off the car, it actually stays within about 10 thou, which is what we're looking for. You can see we did a full revolution. Try again here. If I pull that way, I'm pulling the shaft sideways, which I'm trying to avoid. I'm trying to just turn it. When I weld this, I'm going to weld it in quarters. I'm going to do part of it here, flip it over 180 degrees, do the other part. 
And that's just to help to try to avoid warping the shaft with the heat from the welding. shaft is nicely rebuilt uh might need a little more rebuilding on that side but i'll get to that well there you go folks the drive shaft is in i guess i could check to see if it's still straight but if the transmission explodes we'll know it wasn't but there it is hopefully it holds up and works well well if you wouldn't mind giving us a thumbs up that would be great and at this point we've kind of wrapped up the drive shaft but a couple key things to remember one if you're going to get it measured to take it to a shop make sure you call that shop and find out how they want you to measure it because what i showed you might not be how they want it measured two is how we cut it is not the preferred method how we shortened it it's better if you can just remove the end the rear part of the shaft and then shorten it put it back on that would work a lot better but i didn't have a lot of options so we did it this way there's a couple options for it, however you want to do it it's up to you but thanks for watching have a great day.